We're here to answer your game, gaming, or game night questions. You can send your questions to questions at tabletopbellhop.com or head over to tabletopbellhop.com where you can click on Ask the Bellhop. Social media works too. We're everywhere as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. Now, I will admit the best way is to go to the website. That way we don't lose track of it. We don't miss anything. It gets I get a nice big notification on my phone and on my PC. But you know what? Ask a question anywhere, in person, uh, Messenger, send me a text, catch me on Facebook, Twitter, me, we, Diaspora, WT Social, wherever you want. I'm not going to say no to a question asked anywhere. As we continue to deal with the global COVID-19 epidemic, pandemic, much of the world, if not officially locked down and ordered to remain home, are encouraged to remain isolated for the protection of everyone. Now, since this whole thing started, I have gotten a lot of game recommendation questions, especially surrounding this whole stay-at-home initiative. We covered one part of this last week where we talked about games that are great for playing when you're stuck at home for an extended period of time. Mm -hmm. We talked about epically long games, legacy games, campaign games, and games with high replayability. Now, from that, another interesting question popped up in a couple different places asked by a few different people. Now, if it's just one person who asked, I probably just would have left it as it was and talked to them. For one, Jeff Seuss on our Discord channel mentioned it. And then we also had a couple people on Twitter come up with the uh, a similar question, like reworded different, but people who were looking for the same thing. What people are looking for are games where there was little physical contact. Games where you don't need to pass playing pieces or share components. Games where you don't even need to be sitting together at the same table and can keep your distance. And that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. So games with little to no contact required, as well as some gaming hacks you can apply to games that exist that normally would have contact, but that you can do a few things to reduce the physical interaction during those games. Now, before we do get to the recommendations, I do want to mention something. With what's going on right now in the world today with this pandemic, do not take these as suggestions on ways to get out there and get gaming and go out to the public and go to your local game store or have your game group over. That is not what this is meant to be. These are meant to be suggestions for safe ways you can get together with your game group in person. And you're not supposed to be going to the local gaming cafe. Yeah, these are suggestions for how you can play with the people you are already bunkered down with and ways and present a way to reduce or present any cross-contamination in your own home. Yeah. Now, once this pandemic is over, this list also should be a good list for people who have, say, a simple cold so they can still game with their friends while reducing the list of passing that on or a way for germaphobes to enjoy a hobby they may have avoided or a way for people to be a little safer when they game with each other. Yeah, with most board games, almost everyone touches everything. Yes. Now, I got to admit, at least for me, before I sat down and actually started thinking about this, you just didn't realize how honestly unsanitary the average board game is. Because in most tabletop games, there are a lot of components. You've got meeple and cubes and cards and dice and the board and the miniatures and everything else. And almost all of them are touched by everyone at the table or passed around or handed to each other. Like, just think about how many people touch a single card in Euchre, how often that, that, that left bower gets passed around, or how often that wood has been traded for sheep in your game of Catan. Or, like, we pass the dice to the next player and we hand it to them. Or another player asks another person, hey, can you move my guy because I can't reach? Only then on your turn, you move your guy couple turns later and then how often has that monopoly money sitting on free parking been handled well first off there shouldn't be any money on free parking but we covered that a couple of weeks ago <laughs> yes we did now i'm not trying to gross anyone else out here like th that's not the point but it is something i think people should try to be aware of and i think nowadays with what's going on people are more aware of it just make sure everyone's practicing good hygiene and diligent hand washing that should be enough to mitigate any problems by normal in nor on a normal day and it's like just sharing a game on a normal event a normal night and, and normal use but there's a huge sanitation aspect to public health information right now but this actually shouldn't be new information to people we may mm. need to wash our hands more often in times like this 
but how we wash them shouldn't actually need to be different. You should always wash your hands properly when you wash them. Yeah, there's a really good video going around there with some black ink and some gloves that uh, that I've been sharing quite a bit myself recently because it, it's eye-opening to people who don't know better. So passing things around and everyone using shared resources and everyone using the same dice and passing cards back and forth is really common in gaming. It isn't ubiquitous, though. Not every game has these aspects. Not every game has it. So what we're going to talk about are some games that either eliminate the sharing of resources or at least reduce it or make it limited so there's a little less physical contact and interaction. We can start with something along the lines of bring your own game pieces with Magic the Gathering. Yes, so this was the first one that popped into my head. And I was just thinking about the fact that back in the 90s, when I played Magic heavily, every player had their own deck of cards. And you don't touch anyone else's cards. Heck, that people got upset if you touched their cards. Except for the fact that technically in the rules, the opponent's allowed to cut your deck. Take that out of there. You've got a game where everything's self-contained. Everything's your own. You're going to use your cards. Your opponent's going to use their cards. There's no distinct reason you need to be right face-to-face -face near each other. Uh, now, I do realize nowadays with Magic, there are tokens and plus one counters and stuff like that. As long as everyone's got their own and you're not sharing from the supply, I think it's a perfect game for being able to play with someone else where you don't actually have to touch anything the other people are touching. And then the nice part is... The, 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 you don't need close proximity. Like, you can play it online as long as you trust each other not to stack the deck or something silly. The only problem with that, though, is you're going to have to probably know all the cards, or at least you're going to have to take time reading off your cards to your opponent. Like, oh, I just played a Rat Swarm. This is what it does. It's a 1-1 one -one Swamp Blocker. I'm totally making up Magic cards now, so. Yeah, this was admittedly easier back when the total number of cards was something knowable by a single person. Yeah. Nowadays, it's a bit trickier because you simply can't know all of the cards your opponent may, mm -hmm. might play. Uh, my online play on Arena has been, you know, every time I go up against somebody else online, they play a card I've never seen before, yeah. every time. Um, and uh, when you're playing in Arena, that's easy, because you can just hold mouse over it. But it's a little harder if you're playing with real yeah. decks. Uh, but if you just take your time and talk with each other, there we go. And that was Magic the Gathering. I bet you there's people out there that know every card. <laughs> I think Probably. I've seen some of them on yeah. Friday night. <laughs> All right. I specifically called out Magic the Gathering because it's the most popular collectible card game out there. But pretty much all of the CCGs, all of the card games out there, all of these two-player dueling deck construction games work. Uh, the thing is make sure everyone has their own version of the additional components, right? So, like, I, I don't, I haven't played it in years, but my kids got into Pokemon for a while, and there's a coin that needs to be flipped in Pokemon pretty often. Well, you just make sure you each have your own coin. And there's damage tokens. Well, you each have your own supply of damage tokens, and you put your own tokens on your own your own pocket monsters. Uh, even, like, Ashes, Dawn of the Phoenix board, which is a really neat dice-based collectible, or not even non-collectible, but dueling card game. As long as you each have your own set of dice and your own tokens and everything. Uh, the other one I thought of was Keyforge, but then I realized it's actually a bad one because Keyforge, there's an awful lot of giving people your cards or taking from them. I noticed the, the few times we played Keyforge, we, both me and Sean dove into that game and it died off, sputtered out pretty yeah. quickly. But I remember there was an awful lot of, oh, here's your alien. I put this under here and I take this from you and I get your top card off your deck. So may not be the best choice because of that. Uh, Pokemon, especially, I know when, when I was playing that with my kids, we all had our own things and we never, yeah. never touched each other as you played on your own little game surface and went to it. Those were other, some other dueling card games. All right. I got one more. It's a specific one and I could have probably included it with the other ones. It's Sorcerer, which is another dueling card game, but it has a lot of board game elements. So that's why I kept it out separate. And I realized, as I was talking about other dueling card games, there is a problem in Sorcerer. There is one of the lineages that powers up by taking other people's cards, the Arthropod Followers. So don't, as long as you don't use that faction. Now, the trick here, and the reason I wanted to put this one first, because we're going to get into this with other games later, is it's a game with a board. But as long as you just have one player do all the stuff on the board, you remove that level of interaction or that, that level of contact. Because, yes, there's going to be three locations, but as long as one player tracks the damage on those and at the start of each round tells you where, like, hey, I want my guy at that one. And just one person does all the, the interaction with those. 
Now, again, you're going to want your own stuff. So you're going to need your own Omen tokens. You're going to need your own set of dice. That way, nothing needs to be shared. Now, White Wizard actually sells these all separate. You can get a Sorcerer dice set. You can get additional tokens. But having two core sets is probably the safest way to play because that way you're not sharing anything because otherwise, at the beginning, you're going to be somehow going to have to divvy out the cards between the two players, which, again, if you have to do that, just make sure you proper proper hygiene, go wash your hands before you start playing. But two core sets is definitely the safest way to play Sorcerer. And there's a good chance that if you're a fan of the game, you don't bought your own core set anyways. True enough. <laughs> That was Sorcerer. All right. The second game that came to my mind after Magic the Gathering was Werewolf or Mafia uh, or any of the other versions of that. These are those social deduction games which only really require players to talk to one another. And you don't really have to be close together. You could easily be two meters apart while playing Werewolf or Mafia. Now, if you've got a big group, you're going to take up a lot of room, but so what? You just basically need a large enough place to fit everyone and you're good. Now the problem is, is the selecting of roles. So there's a couple things you can do. Normally you use a standard deck of cards or you can use a, a themed werewolf mafia set. So one, you can make sure those were clean before you start so that the person handing out the like shuffle the deck, put it on a center table and make sure that's clean to start. But even better though, there's apps out there. So I was looking at one app and yes, it uses your specific phone to hold up the cards, but you can just like, hold the phone out to people like here's your role do you see it okay next here's your role do you see it next here's your role then you can even eliminate all those cards yep and that was werewolf or mafia one of the few times you're actually going to hear that recommended yes. on this show i have if you're if you're stuck alone and you're desperate enough now i gotta i gotta think there's probably not a lot enough people a lot of people stuck at home with enough people to play werewolf or mafia but i'm sure there are cases where and you when, would have a big enough group. and when we get past this Yes. And, and, you, and, and you're at a point where you've just got someone who's got the sniffles. You can use your yep. isolation then. Exactly. All right, here's my first one we call a hack, gaming hack. It's when you take a game where normally you would share a bunch of components and do something to re reduce that contact. And I'm just using this as an example. You could probably do this with other games. And I don't even know why this one popped into my head. I think it's because the original version of the game, which I own, didn't have some of the things, the new one. So Robo Rally is the game, and this is a program movement game that you have to tweak a couple things, but basically you share almost nothing. Now, this is only the new one, because in the original game, you had a shared deck of cards. So you have, uh, a, like everyone pulls from the same programming card deck and then puts into the same discard pile and you shuffle. So it's terrible for what we're talking about today. Well, the newest printing from Hasbro gives everyone their own deck. And that's why this game popped out in my head was, hey, everyone has their own stuff. They have their own miniature. They have their own deck. They have the, the, their own player board. But then there is still some stuff that's shared. But you know what? There's still ways to get around it. So there's an upgrade deck. The, and there's upgrade cubes. And when you move over certain spots of the board, you collect a cube. And then you can spend the cubes to buy upgrades. Well, what you can do is you can give every player their own upgrade deck. So you just take the deck and shuffle it and give everyone their own deck. So then what's even neater there is that everyone's going to have different options available to them that makes the game a little asymmetric. And same thing with those cubes. Just make sure everyone has their own little stack of cubes instead of um, sharing from the, the, the main pool. And the same with the damage cards. So there's three different types of damage cards, and this is a deck builder. We're going to throw them in your deck. Well, just split up the various damage cards before you start playing so everyone has their own pile. And then when a player gets something, they just use their own pool. The only other thing is what we talked about with Sorcerer is one player owns the board and all the miniatures they touch all the stuff the, the, probably the owner of the game right is what i would go with yeah and that was robo rally all right next is a party game and what i was thinking here is that a lot of party games concept just being one of my favorites is if you can find a moderator someone who can like run the game then only one person has to touch the pieces. Now, Concept in particular has a large board with a bunch of icons on it, and the person giving out the clues is going to touch all these little plastic pieces and put them on the board. Well, if you have one player be the person who gives out the clues over and over, the rest of the players can guess. Now, the problem here, though, is keeping players from crowding together to be able to see the board. So this one you may want to split into teams, Basically, so you can have like a group of two people come up and then they go away and another group of two people come up. Uh, this is, again, I'm thinking like, you know, five, six people stuck in a house together at the most. The larger groups, obviously, this may not work as well. 
The other thing though, is you can pick up an XL play mat, which is huge. Like this thing is massive. That makes it a lot easier for people to see from further away. So uh, I find uh, this one a bit riskier than most because the personal space issue on yeah. concept is, is probably the most violated uh, of the games we've chosen here. But, uh, you know, there are ways. So that was concept. Yeah, again, with low player counts, right? If, you, if you're only playing four people, you got one yep. person to this side, one person to that side, two meters apart, they should be able to see it. And again, these are also suggestions for when we're not under quite as strict restrictions once, once things have been lifted. All right. Um, during our, our intermission, or before we started here, I mentioned I'm not going to talk about RPGs, and some people are going to think this is an RPG. Personally, I think it's more of a hybrid, and that is for the queen. This is a card game where players are improvising, creating characters, and the relationship between those characters and their queen while on a journey to a foreign country. Now, normally, this game is all about passing a deck around. So you have a deck of cards. All the rules are in the deck of cards. Everything you need is in the deck of cards. You normally would read from it and then pass it, then the next person would read and pass it. Well, just remove that passing. Have one person ask all the questions, read all the rules. Now, there is one other shared component, and that is an X card. But the only thing you have to do here is replace it with a hand signal. Whatever you prefer to use, crossing your arms, whatever that happens to be, you just replace it with a hand signal. And you know what? With this game, players don't even have to be in the same location. Um, with today's video conferencing and messaging software, you don't even have to be in the same country to be able to play for the queen. So there is no need to be in close contact for this game at all. And I believe it is available on Roll20 specifically, yes? Yeah, it is, but it's like 10 bucks. So you gotta you gotta buy it if you do it that way. But that is cheaper than the physical game. I'm actually tempted to pick it up because I don't own the physical game and it would be a way to have the game. All right, well, that was for the queen. All right, having one person do all the work is gonna be the theme for the, the next few, possibly the rest of our suggestions. So another one is Legacy of Dragonhold. This is, it's sold as a role-playing game from Fantasy Flight. I would say it's not. Uh, it's an adventure game that basically uses mechanics from the old witch way style books that many of us grew up with. Uh, mostly like the fighting fantasy way of the tiger style of book. Now, normally the game requires, again, players to pass around the book so that everyone has a chance to do the reading and then all the other player and all the, and um, pass around the dice because there's die rolls involved and all the other players giving input on which way to go. Well, again, just have one player do the reading and the dice while still getting all the input from the rest of the group on which decisions are made. So if it's Sean's turn to read, it's also his turn to make the decision. Well, I'm going to read for him, but it's still his turn. Yep, that was Legacy of Dragonhold. All right, very similarly, there is, we mentioned Choose Your Own Adventure books. There is now two Choose Your Own Adventure board games. I'm specifically talking about the House of Danger one here, but as far as I can tell, they're both equally well-reviewed. So... Uh, this is the modern board game, not the classic books, um, though these are actually based on it. There was a House of Danger, Curse of uh, Choose Your Own Adventure book, and the board game is based on that book. Now, this is on the list for the exact same reason as Dragon Hole, right? There's no reason one player can't do all the reading, rolling, and tracking required to play through the entire House of Danger. And that was Choose Your Own Adventure, House of Danger, but works for the other uh, ones as well. Yeah. The other one that's, I don't remember the name of it. I looked it up at one time. I didn't note it here in the notes. Uh, next, a classic game, classic Canadian game, Trivial Pursuit. Uh, if you have someone willing to bite the bullet and play moderator, Trivial Pursuit can be played with players sitting a good distance apart or possibly even teleconferencing with only one player having to contact with the game components. The moderator is going to read out all the clues and interacts with the board and do all the movement and dice rolling. Now, I chose Trivial Pursuit specifically because everyone knows Trivial Pursuit, but I think this hack is going to work with every guessing trivia party game. Now, the one nice thing with Trivial Pursuit is if you have multiple editions, and there are so many, each person could have a different edition to be asking questions from. It would be a little, mm -hmm. a little strange, but there is some uh, you know, shared knowledge, and in theory, it should all sort of balance out. That way, one person maintains the scoring board and the dice, but everyone gets a chance to ask yep. and answer questions. You might even be able to split it up if people have multiple copies so that each player, each different player plays a different category. 
<laughs> instead of even sets, right? Like Tron answers, ask the science questions. I ask the, I don't know, the politics questions. This shows how long it is since I played any edition of Trivia Pursuit. I think sports is one of them. I don't even know. Yep. It's been a long time. Well, that was Trivial Pursuit. Or really any other trivia question asking game. Yep. All right, the big boy, uh, Gloomhaven. So this Deanna asked me to put this on the list because to be honest, she pointed out I, again, as long as you make one player in charge of everything, which I admit is a bit of a burden, like setting up the board and moving everything on the board and tracking all the conditions, all an individual player needs to touch are their own cards. They're the, their own deck, their own damage deck, and their own, their own whatever, the, the class deck, right? Um, the, there's no reason I need to move my miniature or I need to help set up. Like, it, I obviously want to do that on every stage just to help. But there is um, no reason one person can't do the work. Now, what I do strongly recommend, though, is if you do this, get the excellent Gloomhaven Helper app. It's literally called Gloomhaven Helper. That will eliminate more than half of your components and stuff you need to track. And the other thing, too, is if you've got one person doing all the other stuff, someone else take over the app and do all the apps part and split that up. Yeah, the app, uh, the app for Gloomhaven really does make a huge difference. Uh, in, in managing things, not only just in the normal game, but also yep. if you're working on Isolate. That was Gloomhaven and the Gloomhaven Helper app. All right, next one's on here because anytime I talk to Sean, it makes me think of this game now, and that is the Duke. Now, this is a chess-like abstract game where players each have their own bag of playing pieces. So the, the key here is you have only your own stuff. Now, normally... When you're playing this game, you're going to end up touching both things. And that usually happens when you capture an, a, an opponent's piece, right? So instead of you capturing the piece, you just say, hey, I'm going to capture your pikeman. And the person whose pikeman it is picks it up. Uh, that way, there's no reason you need to touch each other's components. Now, of course, this works best if you each own your own copy. But as long as things are sanitized and clean before you start, it's you take your bag, I'll take my bag. Now, I picked the Duke because I love the Duke. But really, this applies for chess itself or checkers or war chest or any of these other abstract strategy games with capturing. Again, just get it through your head. Remember, cause that's going to be hard that you let your opponent pick up their own pieces. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, and again, if you are sharing a uh, component, let them sit for three days between playing, yes. <laughs> especially if you can't, uh, you can't clean them if they are, uh, you know, if they will absorb water like cardboard, uh, pieces and things like that. Yes. Uh, the virus only lasts on cardboard for 24 hours. Uh, and that was The Duke and other similar games. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of picked one game to highlight each thing. So another one here. Um, this this basically, again, could have been with the card game. So it's Star Wars Destiny. I, I actually um, advocate this, this game way more often than I probably should. It's, it's a solid game. My, my daughter loves it. So that's part of it. So the thing here is this is a combination of dice game and card game. And it has all the isolation benefits of a trading card game like Magic the Gathering or the ones we talked about earlier. Because players can construct their decks and select their dice in private, only touching their own stuff before getting together. And then when it's time to play, you just kind of make sure everyone has their own resources. So in that game, there's, um, there's money, there's resources and damage counters. Make sure you each have your own set. There's no need to even play together, to be honest. This is another one that will work good over teleconferencing. Excuse me, teleconferencing. But again, that's a little rough if players don't know the cards by sight. Absolutely. But that was Star Wars Destiny. All right, this is our last one. I told you I don't have a very extensive list this time. Though I admit some of the games we mentioned are kind of broad generalizations for game types. And that's kind of what this is. So this one, I got to give credit to Jeff Seuss and our chat room for kind of talking about this game, talking it up, because he recently played with his wife. And when he described how they played, I realized this might be perfect for when you're trying to reduce contact. And that is Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. Now you can play this mystery game with one player doing all the component manipulations. So thing, same thing, one person's gonna control the board and all the pieces, where the other players help with the deductive part. Now even better, in this game, you can kind of split the duties. So you can have one person hold the newspaper. You have another player who's the one who's interacting with the telephone registry. And another player's got the notes and taking notes in their notepad. And then all of you can basically stare at the map from a distance. Or what Jeff recommended is actually using your phone to take pictures of the map so you can kind of sit back and look at it on your own and on your own device. And again, so this is one example, but there are multiple. There are multiple Sherlock Holmes consulting detective games or other detective mystery games 
like this one. So I'm more looking at the broad genre of the game, but specifically calling out this one. Yeah, absolutely. And the uh, the great hack, it really is a great hack. Taking pictures of the board game, uh, of any board that you're using in yep. a game can really help minimize contact with that board from players. Uh, and that goes for a lot of games, even if you're, <laughs> I mean, we use that, well, we use that on uh, uh, Legacy of Lopan when we all had to, yes. we needed to leave the game and, and we, we knew we yep. couldn't let it set up. So we all took pictures of our player boards in the game. And three weeks later when we showed up, we had it all set up exactly yeah. as it was when we left. The nice part about that too is one of the things you do want to avoid at this time. And it's one of those you're going to forget. You're not, you've got all your own components, you got all your own stuff, but then everyone's going to come and lean over the board at once. You don't want to do that. You're trying yeah. to avoid that right now. So being able to go up one person at a time and look at the map is kind of a pain. Oh, wait, did you see this road over here? Oh, hold on. It's your turn to come look, <laughs> right? Take a picture of it on your phone, walk away, and then you can share what you're, what you're talking about, your, your phone or mobile device. And that was Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. Well, that's the end of the games list we have, but I had a few suggestions that I compiled to uh, sort of give some extra hacks and help in helping out people keep that isolation. So mm -hmm. there are other steps that can be taken for not only play with others, but even with your own home when someone will be going out and getting groceries and things. People, even if we are isolating, we are still unfortunately no, or fortunately, forced to yeah, have some contact with others and the outside world. And my first tip is sleeved cards. Because if you're playing your card games and you've got sleeved cards, you can dis disinfect them. You can wipe mm -hmm. them down with a Lysol wipe or a rag that's been sprayed down with your disinfectant of choice. Um, yep. You know, sleeved cards means a way cleaner and more sanitary card game. Uh, and that goes for anything. I mean, honestly, card games are kind of gross yeah. if you if you think about them in the big picture. Uh, to, next... to be honest, I agree. I, I play unprotected. That's, that's a personal preference, but it's definitely less sanitary. It, it's something, again, with, with what's going on, you're more aware of these things. And yeah. I'm like, oh, there, there's a reason to sleeve cards I hadn't thought of before. I personally hate that, that they become slippery and they're hard yeah. to stack and they're hard to shuffle. Plus, I don't play, if, in my opinion, if I play a game long enough that the cards get ruined, I'll just go buy another copy of the game because I obviously love that game and the person who designed it deserves my money again. I wouldn't feel guilty buying another copy of Terraforming Mars for the amount of times I got out of there. Yep. Now, the other thing too is technically you can buy cheap enough sleeves that you could just toss them out and re-sleeve, but that's a lot of time to spend. Yeah, yeah. So next up, latex gloves. Now, do not go out and buy these. Please do not go out and buy latex gloves. But if you have an open box of latex <laughs> gloves, the hospital isn't going to want that. So you can slip on a pair to use while you're setting things up. Just remember, if you are wearing latex gloves for some purpose, don't touch your face. The moment you touch your face, you have now defeated the purpose of the latex gloves in both directions, both protecting others and protecting yourself. And no, Sean's restriction on not buying them. That's during the current pandemic. When the world returns to normal, feel free, buy yeah. latex gloves. Absolutely. Uh, there's something you should always have around your house, really. Um, I have, and, and even even just not even necessarily latex, like your, your usual kitchen gloves. Yep. If you're that concerned, especially nowadays, just when setting up the game, right? So the, quite a few of the games we mentioned earlier have shared components at the beginning of the game, right? We're talking about splitting decks up between players. Well, wear the gloves while you're doing that splitting up, right? So when you're setting up Sorcerer, get a hold of the person you're playing with, ask them what heritage, lineage, and I forget the domain they want to use and get those out using the gloves. And then you can stick to having your own components after. So next up, UV sterilizers. Now, oddly enough, I discovered that this is something that some people have in their home sometimes. Okay. Um, now, follow the instructions. And because they're all going to be different, uh, but be careful because these things are really prone to breaking down. Uh, even in the hospitals, they break down regularly. So if you're using them a lot more than just cleaning off your cell phone every once in a while, which is what a lot of them are made for these days, they may break down a lot quicker than you expect than, you know, once a week throwing your phone in there for a while. Uh, I don't have much to say on that. <laughs> I didn't know that was even something yeah. people bought at home. Yeah, so. you can. Uh, I, I found them on Amazon for like 75 bucks. You can get one that's about the size of, of most uh, large phones. Okay. For cleaning for cleaning your phone. Um, Fair. But uh, now next up is, and this is something that really we should all do more often, regardless mm -hmm. of whether there's a pandemic or not. And that's table cleaning. This right now is super important. Sanitize 
before and after. Yeah. There are lots of cleaners out there. So if you aren't hoarding bleach wipes, you probably have a spray cleanser and a clean rag you can use. To give those surfaces a good wipe down again before and after you're done. Yeah, that's a big one. That's an important one. I admit I'm bad at it. I, you know, I'm, I'm not terrible. Like I wipe down the table before every Gloomhaven game. It's at least once a week. But I'll admit when people aren't coming over, I tend to not do it. It's just D and I play or me, D and the kids. I'm not, I'm not so great at cleaning the table. But when I got to clear it off anyway to switch games that are set up, I do do it. Yeah. So another recommendation, which kind of goes with the sleeving, is laminating. If you can, laminate your components. Uh, this is especially useful for um, games with like player aids and player handouts. But you can also do it for boards. Uh, along with laminating, you can use um, spray varnish. So I learned this trick from Snakes and Lattes. Snakes and Lattes literally varnishes every board, and then they can wipe it down. So it's a it's a good way to clean it up. And then Ryan Peach in our chat room is reminding us, because he's mentioned this before, is coin capsules, which a growing number of people are using to protect their tokens in their games, or their, even their money, or round components, or smaller components. Anything you can do that puts a plastic over the cardboard is going to be good, because as Sean mentioned, it lasts at a different amount. So easy to wipe down, easy to clean. Uh, RPGs, I, I know that wasn't our main topic tonight, but um, sleeve your character sheets. So you, I, you don't necessarily have to laminate them, but even if you just buy sleeve protectors or, or sheet protectors, it's a, it's a good way to at least your character sheets, your notes, your, your, your DM notes, whatever you're going to use. Using sleeve protectors, you can then wipe them down at the end. Player handouts should always be laminated or again in some kind of protector. Yeah, and just remember though, if you are sleeving, that is so that you can wipe them down with a disinfectant because yes. viruses do last longer on plastic than they do on paper and cardboard. Right. Uh, but it allows you to, to wipe them down by putting them in plastic. So, you know, you, 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 you take a step back by putting them in plastic, but it allows you to clean them better. Correct. So, and again, my final tip is be aware. We are used as gamers to helping each other out, moving things for other people, sharing things. And we need to concentrate at this time not to slip into those old habits. If you're tired, it's really easy to get sloppy and undo all the efforts we've been working towards today. Yeah. Yeah, I want to say, like, it's so easy to forget, right? I could see being perfectly not sharing a single thing, not touching anything, and then the game ends, and then you start gathering everything up to help clean up, right? Like, it's just, because yeah. that's what you do. Yeah. Now, we're not also not advocating, we're not trying to be germaphobes here. Like, the, we're in exceptional circumstances right now. So yes, there are ways you can be better, but I also would be rather frustrated if someone showed up to my game night six months from now or a year from now and everything's normal. It's like, I'm sorry, I'm not helping you clean up because I don't want your germs. I would be a little frustrated by that. So it, it's going to be a balancing act. Again, mostly it's be aware, right? So that that's the biggest thing with all of this is think about this stuff and do what you can to try to eliminate co-contamination or contamination or sharing Every little germ you can while playing games. I don't think the current world situation says don't play with each other. What we're trying to do is give you ways you can play with each other and make it a little safer. It's totally well, not going. We're not suggesting Twister. Now that we're done with our thoughts on the main topic and we've ended on that wonderful thought of playing with each other, let's head over to the lobby and see what they think. That is another recommendation. You know what? The safest way to play board games right now would be to play by yourself. Note I said buy. <laughs> Stick to solo games. There are a ton of games out there with solo modes. That might be our topic next week. Um, another pers uh, perspective topic is games that are easy to clean. So that was something else we talked about. We didn't really, like Sean kind of talked about it there, but also if you stick to things that are easy to clean, dice games and roll them rights, especially if you have a laminated board, are fantastic because you can easily clean and disinfect all of the components for the game when you're done playing. Yep, absolutely. Uh, and uh, Danielle was pointing out at one point during the uh, episode that you know most people can div dig out enough dice on their own that they yes. can roll. So if you're playing Trivial Pursuit, everyone will have can have their own dice because, True. well, we do. True. Yeah, Twister is easy to clean. It is. It Except is that easy. spinner, I think. You, you got you to gotta you do know something what? with the spinner. If you're, uh, I have to say this, this is this is a, a pro tip. There is a spinner app on. Oh, there you go. Uh, in the app stores, that's way better than using the actual spinner. Because <laughs> my kids right. have Twister. 
and the spinner warps really easily and doesn't yep. actually spin that well. So for true mm -hmm. randomization, get yourself the spinner app. Uh. All right. So I noticed our chat room had the same problem I did while trying to come up with this list. It's not easy. Like almost every game you can think of, you're like, no, wait, I passed that. Oh, wait, we both touched that. I, you know, like that's just a thing, right? Like, like the game, that's part of it. It's just shared social experience. That's why we're gaming together. We're supposed to all be at the same table together, sharing an experience, interacting and having that social thing going on. So trying to pull those aw aspects away from board games kind of make it so it's not a board game anymore, right? Like I'm thinking, oh, Onitama, there's a chest. Like, oh, wait, no, you pass the cards to the opponents after your turn. Or like, like all of those games, like Twilight Imperium, who wants to be the person moving all the ships? Like, like who wants it? Like, yeah, you can technically do it because everyone's got their own thing. But then there's a shared deck of, of uh, resources. There's a shared deck. I'm like, no, no, that doesn't work. Yep. Uh, Ryan mentions uh, Kingsburg. If everyone has their own supply of plus two tokens. Kingsburg. I think that's a dice placement game, though. So what I'm thinking, Kingsburg, from what I know of it, you're going to roll a set of five dice, and then you're going to place those dice out on a board. Everyone would need their own dice, and there would be the slight concern of um, everyone touching the same board. Like, if you're careful, you can put dice on a board and take it off without touching the board, but you have to be careful of that, not touching the board while you're doing it. And you're all sharing the same board, so it's it might be one of those where everyone has to back off while you put yours out if right. you're trying to keep that two-meter distance. Have everyone stand away from the table. Okay, I'm going to take this action. I'm going to take this action. I'm going to do this thing. And then you back up, and someone else goes in with their own dice and does their thing. Right. That's that's the only concern I can think of. Um, what I can't remember in Kingsburg, if there's if you need to remember whose dice are which, but you can do that easy enough with different colored dice. Yeah, there's colored dice in Kingsburg. It's already it's it's blue. They're blue, black, red, white, yellow, colored dice. Yeah. I I don't know. I I admit I don't own the game. I've played uh, my friend Jamie's copy a couple times. I don't remember if there's anything else. But yeah, you just have to be careful to place the dice without touching the board. Yeah. Um, I thought there was a deck where monsters come out or something, but that might be something one player could do. Yeah, how many games have stealing mechanics where you yeah. take stuff away from other people, right? Yeah, like it no, just it's, it's it's shocking how common shared resources are, right? Like like there's enough games maybe I, if they come with enough cubes. I'm using cubes as a generic for resources here. You might be able to give everyone their own pool. Like I'm, I'm thinking Gold West, right? There's probably not enough in there, but if you gave everyone enough silver, enough gold, and enough wood, and enough thing, they had their own little pile of stuff. But yep. then there's still the map. Like you're gonna end up touching that board. Yep. No, absolutely. Even even something as as uh, as sort of asymmetrical and separate as uh, Terra Mystica, you know, there's enough. There's enough. There, well, there's stuff. those the terraforming tokens. Like it's just, it's a big pool because they're not the same on both sides. Yep. And and again, like yeah, you might be able to have one player move everything, but you need to be close. You need to be able to look at the board. You've got your little power pools. There's the, oh, I build a bridge, so I'm putting that out. It just, again, it's it, that's really risky. There's a lot of stuff being touched by different people. You also have the pool of, that one definitely wouldn't work because of the pool of, um, I can't remember what they're called, the technology cards or whatever. Oh, yeah. The, yep. the things when you when you yeah, build yeah. A, a sanctuary, you're yep. taking from a pool right there. So right there, it wouldn't work. Yep. So that one's disqualified. Yep. Yeah, Wallace is on my shirt somewhere. Luckily, that's a... Luckily, we've got Board Game Arena for Terra Mystica, so yeah, we can still... So that's that's the other thing, right? This uh, We obviously didn't go there this week. Maybe that's something we're going to do next week. It's obviously the safest thing you can do is, is play solo or play digitally, play online. Play. I'm on my computer, Sean's on his computer. We don't have to be together. We can be across the world. That is obviously the safest way. But you know what? I'm stuck with these people in my house. I want to play games. I want to play games with them, right? Like, that's... I said games. No, no, I just think about how you're stuck with these people in your house. <laughs> oh, I'm terrible. I hate this. Horrible. People I'm stuck with. I can't believe it. Oh. See, we're we're all kind of uh, feeling the cabin fever here a little yeah. bit. No, absolutely. Uh, so I mean, I I did not see any other recommendations in the chat. So uh, sleeving being in, uh, uh, important. Yeah, sleeving and the coin, the coin protectors. You know, again, coin protectors using using plastic to protect so that you can disinfect is the key yes. that's 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 the whole thing yep. you use the plastic so that you can properly disinfect things very true all right we got to talk to nightbot they keep just tossing the same quote out i know over i don't understand why it's not randomizing well i need to take a look at that i it's a great quote but it, it does need to be uh randomized but welcome zalipa 
Absolutely. That's a name I don't recognize from the chat. Yeah, and there was there we was usually a... try to say hi to new people, but we don't yeah. do it while we're in the middle of a segment. <laughs> we're not ignoring you. I always, I always do try to at least get a hi in the chat, but uh, not, not out loud. I sometimes. Oh, nice, nice busy chat. Thank you all, and you can still chime in if you guys, you folk, think of one while we're going. Feel free to to point it out. I would love to add to that blog post, like. <laughs> And the, and Vixen Dex, there's another another new one. No, sorry, Vixen Dex, and also uh, sorry, Azwipi, Azwipe, 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 Azwipe was in earlier, yeah. And hi, Damn. Vixen Dex. All right, uh, and uh, yeah, there's a few new new ones in there. All awesome. right, moving on. 